So part two of three. Part one you saw us take the slow cylinder housing off the bike. Um, we've now got it on the bench and we're going to be replacing the uh, seals and the dust seal and the piston seal and giving it a good, uh, good clean up as well. There is a little bit of a cheat uh, during the video um, regarding the uh, bleed nipple. It was really on tight. I guess it hasn't been moved in over perhaps 10 years. Um, so we had to take it away, put it in a vise and actually use a socket to get it off. I'll probably mention it again, but when we put the bleed nipple uh, back into the slave cylinder housing, I actually put a little bit of copper slip on there, um, which hopefully will, will stop it seizing up in the future. So we've got the unit on the bench, and as you can see, there's um, it's quite dirty in there. There's no actual real deep corrosion, so there shouldn't be a problem in refurbishing it. You can see that the dust seal is well perished. It's, uh, it's flapping about like a wizard's sleeve, so that will have been allowing dirt to get behind there and, and into the piston seal, which is probably the cause of the failure. So our next job is to remove the bleed nipple. Um, we're going to do this, well, one to clear the, the, the internal ways out on the housing, but also we're going to use compressed air uh, to remove the piston um, from the housing. So just a quick clean down of the housing on the uh, just so no crap sort of gets inside uh, and damages any of the inner surfaces on the piston or the housing. So we're going to use compressed air just to, to release the piston from the housing. Um, quick blow job um, to get rid of the piston and um, well here's the money shot and I've put it in slow motion just so you can see the, um, well, see the piston coming away from the housing. Just using a um, bit of metal polish, Solvol or Mothers or whatever, just to polish the inside up a little bit and get rid of that um, a little bit of surface tarnish that's on there. So let's start putting this bad boy back together. So this is the, the inner seal that fits on the piston. It does go in a specific way. Um, the seal itself is tapered and it's quite obvious um, how it actually fits on the piston. But you could always take some images um, when you're taking, taking it apart, just so you can uh, recall how it all goes back together. I'm just putting on some um, some lubricant there, because it's very important to lube up uh, rubber any time when you're going for the, an insertion of it. It's the lubricant, the grease that's designed for use with rubbers in hydraulic systems. I, I, I don't know the trade name for it, but it's, it's, it's a fairly common stuff. So just um, pulling the rubber on um, over the piston and you can see that how it locates when you're working through it. Just don't stretch the, uh, don't stretch the rubber too much and damage the seal. So just installing the new spring that came with the kit. Um, it fits specifically over um, a raised part in the cast and it's fairly obvious where it goes. So just using um, well a smear of hydraulic fluid on the on the surface there where the where the rubber would be in contact. You can never have enough lube. So I've installed the, the dust seal um, where it locates on the piston. Again, just just put in a little bit more of the um, uh, rubber grease uh, on there just before we we slip it in. Um, we want it nice and greasy just as we slip it in. It's going to be tight in there. So the piston and seal assembly is back in the housing um, and you can just see how much more positive it is as well with that new spring in, um, good resistance and, and moving back easily. The outer periphery of, of the dust seal just needs to go over the um, top part of the housing and it actually sits in there in, in, in a channel that sits all the way around it which obviously improves the seal and holds the seal in place as well.
So I'm just going to slip the uh, bleed nipple back in. As, as I said earlier, we're just going to use um, we'll sample it with a bit of release compound uh, just to make things easier in the future if it ever needs to come off. Don't, don't go crazy with a re release compound and certainly um, just make sure you don't block any of the oil wear holes up on, on, on the bleed nipple. Well really that's the assembly of the slave cylinder finished and um, the next job is to put it back on the bike. Um, please join us in, in our third episode where we'll put it back on the bike and, and bleed it up and hopefully get a working system. And uh, well, bye for now.